Ian and Alan, welcome. Hey, thanks. So just wanted to thank Small Step for uh, for showing up and doing talk, telling us a little bit, you know, about their experience. So just introducing Alan, he's a hearing manager over at Small Step. And Alan, if you just wanted to tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, Small Step and what it does, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So uh, that sums it up on my title. I'm, I'm an engineering manager. Small Step does certificate management, kind of in a nutshell. So um if you think of what Let's Encrypt does for the web, we let you do a kind of the same thing, a private certificate authority inside your infrastructure. Um, so you can do encrypted communication everywhere. Um, and my role uh, kind of started as building out the product. I, I implemented the replicated stack and our on-prem install. Um, and now I kind of manage a few teams within the company and, and still oversee the on-prem stuff. Awesome. So um, how important is it for you to be able to deliver your applications on-prem? Yeah, so um, we are a security product. So and we've talked at times about different strategies for how customers could deploy stuff. Um, I think from you know a VC standpoint, an investor standpoint, it's always appealing to have a SaaS product um, because it's highly scalable. You can make it super turnkey. You don't have to think about the release process. There are just a lot of costs that aren't involved and, um, and it's, it's a lot lighter touch. So, you know, we looked at op, like kind of ways that we could release our product um, to customers and that they would be comfortable having it in their infrastructure in a way that's um, backed by SaaS. And actually there's a really, there's a broad swath of customers that are very happy with that. And they're fine with SaaS. Um, we looked at, you know, can we do hybrids? Can we have like a database that's encrypted in our SaaS product and they hold the keys and, or can we do a, an agent in their network, but then all the data, you know, lives over on our end. I think at the end of the day, just because we are a security product, um, you're always going to have at least some pocket of customers who absolutely have to have things on-prem. Um, so like we have, we have some customers who, um, they not only want control of their private keys, but they, you know, within their organization, they don't even have to, like you have to have, they do Shamir secret sharing to generate their, you know, root key and they have a, you know, a ritual around it and two people have to be present to be able to open the safe where they store a hardware key. Um, and the whole, you know, the whole process can be lengthy. Um, we've even heard of services. I don't think any of our customers do that will, that will guard, you know, uh, a safe for you in a room. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people can't like at the end of the day, I think your certificate authority, um, like essentially just a little bit more color on that. So, uh, what certificates let you do, and we encourage short-lived certificates are, um, basically throw away shared secrets and then you have a signed identity. So your microservice says, I am this microservice and I have a certificate to prove it. And another service says, I'm this microservice. I have a certificate to prove it. Just like the web does with domains, um, databases could do the same thing. So, um, the certificate authority that does the signing is really critical. And basically, if you kind of pop that, you pop the keys to the kingdom. So all that to say, on-prem for us is, is pretty much a requirement. Some people want to go fully air-gapped. Um, some people just want it in their data center. Um, some people are in the cloud, but they still want to just tightly control network access. They want to own their own KMS or uh, whatever key signing they use to kind of sign certificates and those things. So very important. Um, yeah, critical, I'd say. Awesome, thanks. Uh, so so what was your experience getting up and running with Replicated? Yeah, um, so for me personally, that was that's actually one of the highlights, I think, of the product was um, we tried the uh, bespoke, like, let's install our stuff. And we did it for one customer. And it was really bad. Um, and it took a really long time. And uh, I think what it did for us, we got to come back to that customer after we kind of wired up the replicated install. And it was a way, I mean, it was a, a seamless, quick experience for them. And we got to get the product to other customers on-prem a lot faster. I think if we tried to do the snowflake thing again, or even an appliance, we probably would have still been treading water trying to get by. Um, there were just a lot of moving pieces. And especially, so for us, I guess the thing that made it really awesome is um, we already run our SaaS product in, in Kubernetes and production and everything is microservices. So it's 
pretty hard to just you know extract the binary and send it over to a customer. And we use the same code base in our SaaS product that we use for on-prem. Um, so we basically wanted to ship that, you know, it's in a single tenant mode, essentially. We wanted to ship that to our customers. At the time we deployed everything with Helm charts. Um, so it just gave us a uh, replicated kind of gave us the layer of abstraction that we needed over the top where we could just present easy configuration to the customer. And then it did all the magic. Like, I really feel like the abstractions were what helped us a lot because, you know, we just stuck all the right stuff in the right places in Helm charts across, you know, 20 microservices. And um, that worked. We actually, over time, switched to customize. We moved off of Helm. And as far as customers are concerned, they, they didn't have to know about it. So it worked really well. It fit our infrastructure really well. It fit our configurations really well. And it just let us, it was probably a week or two before we had at least a POC of our on-prem. Yeah. Awesome. Glad to hear it. That's that's what we like to hear. That's yeah. so cool. Um, what needs has Replicated met for you? Yeah. So like I think I mentioned, quicker time to market for sure. Like we, we just needed a way to distribute our stuff. And when you have microservices, you can't just flip a um, ship this button <laughs> for your customers. So um, it let us get going quickly. There were some deals that were in flight that it let us just, you know, get them, keep them moving, not hold them up on technical details. Um, and I'd say the other part of it that's been very valuable, aside from kind of the technical details, is the distribution. So just having a way to manage licensing, to keep track of the customers, to ship, you know, you have the different channels, to be able to ship releases, uh, to think about upgrade paths for the customer, to think about, um, you know, like you mentioned, required releases, kind of the staging of it, different things along the path. I think all of that, it's, uh, and even the troubleshooting, so support bundles. I think when you try to do all of that for an on-prem product yourself, you end up uh, with a lot of bespoke software and solutions and just things pertaining to the distribution itself uh, and end up maintaining a lot of stuff. And for me, that's been really valuable. It's just, we don't think about it. We just publish a release and then all the mechanics are there. So it's good. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so finally, what are some pointers you would like to give to other people that are looking at using Replicated? Yeah. So um, one of the things that I think has helped us be successful is we tried to be thoughtful early on about our configuration APIs that the customers interact with. So if you think of what shows up in your customer's admin console, um, the configuration variables you expose, it, it's a good idea to, um, I would say like we made the decision not to map them directly to implementation details. So we didn't want to say, here's how you configure this microservice. Here's how you configure this microservice. Um, we wanted to say, here's how you configure your database and we'll put that in all the right places. So really making sure that the configurations are a clean API for the customer and they are focused on the customer's use case, not necessarily implement implementation details. And the reason I say that is that it's let us just evolve the whole stack underneath and we keep that the same. Um, customers don't need to go in and reconfigure things on every release. The configuration stays the same. And then we've managed to refactor whole portions of our stack. Again, we moved from Helm to customize uh, for our configs. So uh, that was really important. Um, another piece of advice I would say is, um, to somewhat expect your customers to become familiar with Kubernetes. So um, for some companies, they are exclusively Kubernetes app, apps. And I think in that case, your customers are coming to you looking for something to put on Kubernetes. If you're broader, like in our case, um, we've found that we've had to educate our customers a lot. They do have to become familiar a little bit with Kubernetes. Um, some of them are more averse to it than others. Uh, I think the, the curl installer gives us like a good stop gap, you know, but I think at the end of the day, we really, um, find that our customers need to understand Kubernetes and need to know how to maintain it. So um, those are my two two big ones, I think. That's, uh, that's great advice. So uh, thanks so much, Alan. Really appreciate you spending the time to talk to us and uh, appreciate everything you're doing over at Small Steps. So yeah, thank absolutely. you. Yeah, we like the product. Thanks, guys. Thanks.